Thanks for joining us. This is kind of, I just realized I haven't gone to class in a long time, so it's it's fun. I'm excited. I haven't planted a pot in a while, too. Um, Dan's behind the camera, and I'm going to kind of just dive in because I want to go over a bunch of stuff. A little bit of background is I've been doing container design for over 13 years. I've planted hundreds of containers every year over that time. Uh, everybody has a million different ways to do any one thing. I just want to let you know that my, if, what I do works for me. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. And what I would also want to let you know is like typically when I do container classes, I, I like to basically um, convey that you want to, con that containers are not just set it and forget it. So typical containers, you're gonna to wanna to assess every four to six months. With party pots, we're gonna think a lot shorter term because we just wanna get through the holidays or we just wanna get through an event or whatever. So I really think it's a fun opportunity to play with different combinations. Don't overthink it at all. That's the biggest challenge. So, I mean, maybe we're gonna like put a bow with it or maybe we're gonna, put some cut greens with it, um, do different combinations of plants and just really sort of think outside of the box. I even, I pulled this, uh, you know, maybe it's a little like basket pot that we're making, just like a plastic pot that you're, this is a very cute fall look that could be nice for your doorstep. So my approach to party pots is gonna be different than uh, just, you know, kind of an average container. <clears throat> I do, I have done a class on container design and container planting and care and whatnot, and that's up on our videos. So if you want more of a deeper dive into that, um, look into our videos. Okay, so what I thought I would do is a complete container from start to finish. And then what I thought I would show after that is how to sort of refresh a container for the holidays. So an existing container, I'm just gonna refresh and make it a uh, party pretty. That sound good? Okay, so I'm gonna use this pot. This is one of my, this is a really popular, these cylinder pots are really popular for us lately. And um, one thing that everybody asks me is, do I put gravel at the bottom of the containers? I don't. And the reason I don't is because, uh, a lot of times that can leave sort of an air circulation that can dry out the roots at the bottom of the pot. And so I like to use the entirety of the pot, but what I use over the, the drainage hole are these keeper stoppers. We're gonna zoom in. So this is just a screen that you can put over the drainage hole and it helps keep the soil in and it also helps um, keep the earwigs and slugs and whatnot from coming up the pot. Okay, so, and they come in these, you know, they're like that big, but I usually quarter them because you don't need the whole screen. So I'm just gonna set that over there like that. Okay, um, and then I'm using regular potting soil. And typically what I would say is um, when you're putting in the soil, think about it uh, as when you set the plants in that the, the top of the dirt of the plants is about a half inch or three quarters inch below the rim of the pot. Cause you do want some space there for the water. Um, and then I always add uh, transplant food to everything that I'm planting. So, and people ask me about the application rate, and I know I've said this before, but it's kind of like powdering a donut. So you don't dump like you don't dump a pile of it in. You just kind of dust it in like that. Okay. So I was going around the nursery yesterday. And I'm just pulling a bunch of stuff that just looked fun. So I didn't think about what I was going to put together at all. I've got some plants here. I got some plants here. I got some plants here. I mean, 
how fun is this to play with? Um, but the one thing that really spoke to me and I really felt like I needed this needed to be like a part of a container is this. It's a tree colored. And so I thought it was really funky and fun and I'm gonna revolve the entire thing around it. So if you don't know, these are um, pulp pots and you can basically just do that to get the plant out. Um, another thing with any container, whether they're party pots or um, not, is I don't really pay a ton of attention to massaging the roots a bunch because I think when you, the reason to do that when you're planting in the ground is that you really want the roots to unfurl and take a uh, hold of the ground faster. In a container, I'm not necessarily uh, rushing the roots to really unfurl because that's gonna grow faster in the container. So I'm, I'm, I don't really spend a ton of, I don't massage the roots. What I do do sometimes is rip off the roots. So you can do that if you need space in your container. Okay. This is for Dan. I, I picked the tree color for Dan. Okay. Um, and then I thought this was fun. Oh, and I should know if you've seen any of my classes before, um, and Dan and Taylor know this very well, but I, I don't want to wait for a pot to grow in. Who does? Nobody wants to wait for a pot to grow in. So I plant, I plant everything shoulder to shoulder and then some. So you'll see that um, you can always add more. So see how I'm ripping off. I want to have more root space. So I'm just like ripping off a bunch of this. And it's okay to plant. Them. Jen, doesn't that hurt the plant? <laughs> it doesn't. They're okay. I mean, it's kind of the same thing as if when you massage the roots, you're kind of reaching it up anyway. So, and the core, the core of the roots is still in there. So we're good. What is that plant? This, it's a type of agastache, but I wanted to, it's called sky, sunrise sky blue agastache. And, I think people need to plant this plant more. It's actually really beautiful. Um, and this is a mom. So I'm, I'm, I wasn't really thinking about it, but I, I am picking up on a lot of the purple tones. Um, so you can do that. You can think about that when you're creating your container, but you could also just do a ton of high contrast colors too. That's really pretty. It just depends on your design. How's that looking? Mm. Looking good. Hey Jen, could you maybe mention about um, prepping the plants before you put them into the pot? I think sometimes people ask like, should they be dry? Should they be wet? Should they be fertilized? Should they be all oh, that yeah. So That's how great. should the plants be? Yeah, you definitely don't want to, um, you don't want to be, whether it's in the ground or in a container, you don't want to, if the plant is really dry, that's not good. Cause that'll be a lot of stress on them. So make sure that the plants are wet. If, you're, if, you're, if you know you're doing a project, say the next day, water everything the day before. So then we make sure that they're all pretty well moisturized. Um, it's just, it's too much stress on them and they don't like it. So. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna start adding stuff around. And okay, snapdragons are nice. Okay. 
Um, you can also keep in mind your perspective for the container. So if you can see it all the way around or if there's a front or back to it. And, um, you know, just think about that in your design. It's a little hard to do this backwards, but it's, it's fine, we're good. Yeah, it's looking nice. I like how you have the the shorter plants kind of coming out in front of the uh, the slightly taller ones, but they're all st like stacked up going to the, the collar in the back or in the middle, I guess, right? Yeah, and like I okay, I think one of the reasons I really wanted to pick this is just to really um, convey to think outside the box. So I mean, this is an edible plant. This actually in in the ground would get what, 10 feet or 12 feet? Six to eight, yeah. Six to eight mm -hmm. feet. But we're just using this as an accent point in our container. And we're mm -hmm. thinking short term for the container too. So this will be a nice accent through, I would say Thanksgiving. It's got a really fall, fall vibe to it. And then at that point we can take it apart and sort of readjust it and things like that. Um, and another thing that's really sort of Fall, folly or what is uh, lettuce, chard, um, even like parsley, chives, stuff like that. They're really fun accents to a container. And it, it's also neat because, you know, they are edible. So you can, you can harvest them a bit. Um, yeah, so you're, you're not only making a party plant for a decoration, but you're creating something that gives you some edible garden stuff as well as brings pollinators with the, all the companion plants you're, you're bringing in? Yeah, absolutely. And then all this stuff, it's not just, when I say that it's temporary, and I don't mean that it's, that you just throw everything away because this is all still living. I just basically mean it's temporary in the sense that we're just, we're creating this impact for a short period of time, but then after the event, we can sort of pull apart the pieces and you know let them live out their lives somewhere else, basically. Um, but it's my favorite type of container design because you don't have to really think over, you know, you don't have to think about it too much. Um, I still have more room. So there's always more room, right, Dan? Um, if you're looking for a there, you know, a lot of times I get the question of, is there an, uh, an equation for a plant or a formula for a container? And there does exist one that I don't always use, but you can use it if, for your approach. And it's called Thriller Filler Spiller. So something big that's an accent like the tree collar is the Thriller. And then the Agastache and the Moms are the filler. And then things like this Alyssum or even the Violas a little bit, they're gonna spill over. So they're the spiller. So when you're picking out plants for your pots, that can be helpful to sort of identify, are they the thriller, the filler, or the spiller? Yeah, how far do you feel like the, um... The alyssum and even like the violas are going to be growing out. Do you, do you see them getting kind of full and bushy, or are they going to trail down? We will ask I those. Think both. Yeah, I think both. So. And they bring a great smell too. If anyone smelled like a a tray full of alyssum, it's very sweet, honey like. <laughs> okay, so you can kind of the the. Easiest way to sort of have a designer -y finish is to do a top dressing. Um, so doing a moss or a gravel of some sort is just an easy way to have an accent and just make it look polished. So I'm just gonna take this green moss. Can we see that up close? Oh, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can do the moss or like you could, you know, this is also just a way to, you know, really give it a mood. So this could be more contemporary. I mean, if you're doing, say, Christmas planters, I mean, this could kind of be like snow, you know what I mean? And then you could have 
coned rosemary or whatever, or you could do like a more natural, um, like river rock. So it's just an opportunity to add another design element to the container. Um, and I did, like I said, I picked some, I'm going to try, I'm going to try this and it might not work because I'm, I'm trying it live, but we're, we're, we'll just find out together. Um, but I did pick out, but think of it, you know, go out in your garden and see like what's, what's happening right now. Like, could we use this for a container? Um, I'm going to do a wreath class in a bit, in a couple months, and this is also something to consider for wreaths. So just thinking sort of outside the box, I mean, this might be kind of fun to just add a little bit of a fall element to it. Um, so we'll see how it works. And these are the flower stalks from what, uh, Miss Canthus or? Uh... Yeah, that grass mm -hmm. we have in the back 40 there. Mm -hmm. I got some miscanthus and some ketoniaster and ligustrum. So it's kind of more like a living bouquet, if that's helpful. How's that? Do we do we like it? Do we like the the grass or no? Not much. <laughs> How's it looking, Taylor? It's looking good. I think it's a more like uh, more the bunches together. Yeah. Or like, or as you fill it in, get some, uh, give it a little bit more definition. Yeah. Just do a chunk of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> looking a little like a Victorian hat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Perfect. And? An edible hat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think as you as you finish up and everything, um, talk about the the general care. Like you said, it is a short term plant, but you still have to take care of it. They're all living, and they all have roots and everything like that, and some watering yeah. needs and that stuff. Yeah, I'll go over care at the end. I'll go over general care at the end. But yeah, so well done. this is a nice fall plant there. Um, any questions on this before? I, um. And then I'm going to move on and do a refresh for another pot. Yeah. Any questions? No direct questions at the moment. I think uh, everyone's kind of just watching you create it. Uh, and definitely a call out for everyone in the, in the chat right now or uh, watching live. If you have some questions that you have for Jen, especially near towards the end, um, send them my way. I'll, I'll filter through and let her know what people are asking and wondering about. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going, we're going well. Keep on moving. Okay, I'm gonna set this one over here. Um, okay. Always water after you plant, by the way. So I guess that would be under care. So I did this container. Gosh, I feel like it, this was, I'm gonna move it so you can see it. Um, I think it was in February or so. And I just thought maybe it would be nice for you to see if you, what you can do with your existing pots to sort of freshen them up for the holidays. And I thought this could be a good example. So this is an Aeonium and then I have Hellebore and I have Pieris in the back. The Pieris is, the Pieris and the, the Pieris is all budded up right now. So the Pieris is a kind of a fall, fall bloomer. So I don't want to take that out because all these things are going to open up to white flowers. And the hellebore is a late winter, early spring bloomer. That's this one. So I'm not going to remove this either because I'm going to have a little bit more longevity to this container. But I want it to look nice, um, you know, for my parties. And so I'm going to reassess what's happening on this side. Um, What's the uh, strappy leaf one there? This one? Yeah. It's a liriope. I'm going to take it out, actually. It's not. 
it's it's done it's had its it's had its moment it's time to go um but i do and i do i mean you can see i'm combining succulents with other plants um why not i mean that's the thing i like i love having the different textures i love this drippy succulent i think that's a senecio and so and then this is um a lamium and this is looking really scraggly so i'm just going to chop this whole thing off and then yeah, so you did two kind of approaches there, um, where one you just kind of went in and dug it out, and the other one you're you're cutting it back at the moment. Are you planning on leaving the the um, lamium roots in there, or are you going to pull it all out? No, I'm going to leave it in because that'll flush back out pretty quick. And there, um, that's a nice ground cover. Yeah, and it and it grows back from like almost nothing or little like um, yeah. little sprouts or little uh, pieces really easily. And I think that's a a pretty good note for some people when you have these planters that you're refreshing sometimes just a full chop back even though it doesn't look like anything right then will really have a nice uh flush out um the next couple of months or so it'll grow back in really healthily and look really nice yeah absolutely and it'll look a lot more fresh and then you can you know you just have more longevity to the plant the, to the planter mm -hmm. so both don't be afraid to pull things out and also don't be afraid to just chop them back if you need to right um, so this is kind of a part sun planter. Again, when we're talking about party planters, I'm not really thinking about the sun exposure too much. Um, unless you have a situation where it's going to be blasted afternoon sun, then you'll want to consider the plants. But otherwise, I think you can do combinations of sort of sun and shade plants um, temporarily. And that works so all right. So you don't have to overthink that. Not especially this time of year when it's getting yeah. cooler and the days are shorter anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's add some plants. I thought it would be fun to do this one kind of like a Halloween one. Um, so uh, with the, the black covered. pot. Yeah. <laughs> with the black yeah. pots and everything. That's good. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. So are these edible peppers, Jen? Yes, they are. Dan, Dan can tell you what they are. Well, they're probably labeled ornamental pepper, but they are edible. Yeah. 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 I've always heard you don't really you don't really want to eat them. <laughs> Chili. Chili ornamental. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, in the black container, it's kind of fun to have a the warm colors um, pop it. That's a pansy. The pansies are the sort of fall and winter flowers. That they are both. These are edible flowers too, so that's kind of fun. And as you're putting these in, someone's asking if you're gonna add some extra fertilizer, if you feel like that's necessary or not. Yeah, I could, you know what? Thanks for the um, reminder. Yeah. <laughs> in the moment, sometimes you gotta think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'll just put some of the shirt started. Like that. Yeah. Um, Whenever we talk about fertilizers, we always uh, mention SureStart as one of the first ones because it's the, probably the most used and most um, talked about fertilizers in our stores. It's a great just general fertilizer, but it has that transplant kind of nutrients and microbes and all the mycorrhizae. So um, yeah. it's always a good one to add. It can never really go wrong. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I kind of want some, I feel like we need some height or something. Uh, And this one, I think it would be really cute to just set, I'm going to set a pumpkin in it, just to give it that, that extra festiveness. But I'm really just 
crunching it all together. Um, and then maybe some more. I think that could be a really cute pot next to your front door. <laughs> yeah, it was quick and easy too. I yeah. think it's the, the steps of go in first, clean it out, take off all the dead leaves, bring out any plants that you don't want anymore and trim back everything. And then yeah. with that extra space, fill it up. You know, come back yeah. and after the season, pull out the pumpkins so they don't, you know, rot in there. But they they last for quite a long time, actually. It's surprising how long those little pumpkins last. Oh, they'll last through Thanksgiving for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and beyond. So it doesn't. I think with containers like this, I mean, somebody that's going to come to your house and see this at your front doorstep. I mean, it's a it's a conversation piece. It's a nice accent pot. Um, it's a living bouquet, so I think it's a lot of fun. All right, so good. I would got through. I wanted to go through in about a half hour, so we're good. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Um, people were asking about uh, types of pots and what kind of pots they should look for or they might need. And I think that's definitely it's um, it's much more like their opinions and stuff. But maybe what what you what kind of pots you look for, um, maybe based on sizing and shapes. Okay, sure. The um, containers are, I always say containers are the hardest decision because really it's an opportunity to add a bunch of color or an accent of some sort to your space, um, whether you want it to be, you know, pull out a color from like a throw pillow or whatever that could happen, or maybe you want it to be more neutral. So you can think about the container in terms of sort of artistically how it's going to add to the space but then you can also think about the container in terms of the material so a terracotta pot like this these tend to dry out the fastest out of all the pots because it's completely porous so that's something to consider um you might whatever you put in there you might have to water more so just consider that with your design um, versus, I mean, you can do the, um, I had a plastic pot somewhere, but you could do, oh yeah. You could just do like a simple, this is basically using the basket like a cash pot, cash po, cash pot. So you can just stick in a seasonal change out and that can be really easy. You can do that with a ceramic pot too, if you do, do that with the party pots. It is a lot easier to use just the plastic pot that you can pop in and out with the seasons. So that's something to consider. And then of course, you know, ceramic, there's a billion different types. So I think, uh, I guess just consider the material in terms of watering. Um, yeah, watering and moving, weight. Watering. Sometimes people worry about weight, about if it's on top of counters or tabletops. Um, and then also, uh, like, I think as you were mentioning the, the plastic pot as an ease of moving around, it also is really easy to transplant in and out of because they have some flexibility. You can kind of break up the root structure a little bit with, uh, in a soft way and pull them apart. Um, people are also, uh, mentioning or asking about when the plants all grow together and it gets very, you know, full and tight after a little while. Uh, pulling them apart or you have to worry about the root systems, especially about the plants that maybe you want to keep for a little bit longer. Um, how are you, uh, how do you approach that? Well, I mean, you see, you saw how I kind of ripped at the roots, right? You don't have to be super careful. I don't know. Dan, Dan's laughing at you right now. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I've been doing this, you know, for however many years and pretty successfully. And so, I mean, you can really rip apart the roots. I think if you have, you know, like, the, so this plant I could put in the ground or in another pot and it's gonna complete, I'll take off all these dead things and it would completely flush back out. And I didn't pay attention whatsoever how I was taking this out of the pot. I just ripped it out basically. 
Yeah. So, but there's enough of a root system here that it could definitely live on. So. Right. All, all you really would want to do is kind of trim up the, the ragged ends where the roots were torn and then they'll do that. Yeah. pick right up again. Absolutely. It can stimulate the growth if, even. Mm -hmm. So it can be a positive thing for the plant. Just yeah. always use that, that transplant. Always use, I really like a transplant food because it does help transition the plant to the new environment and it helps them uh, take up nutrients better. And so, and not, you know, not be shocked, go with the shock. Um, yeah. Someone was mentioning uh, considerations on drainage and uh, thinking about that. And I think it's always good to think about your soil as well as the type of pot and then also the plants that you have inside of it. And that's all its own little ecosystem of drainage. <laughs> um, well, yeah, but you know, I would say don't let the lack of drainage stop you from a party pot. <laughs> True. You can, you, if you have a container that doesn't have any drainage in it, I mean, you could either like this is like, you know, you could do the, the, the plastic and set it inside your container without drainage. Or if you want to plant directly in it, that is the, the one time that I do um, gravel. And so I'll put about an inch of gravel at the bottom of the container and mix that with charcoal. And, um, and then you can plant directly in a container without drainage. You just have to, you don't know, it's hard to, you really wanna be sure you don't overwater it because the plant would could be drowning, the roots could be drowning. So that's one thing that I think for a party pot where it's pretty temporary, I think, you know, don't let it stop you. Yeah, I think temporary <laughs> is the key word too. Just being like, it'll, it'll last for a while. The, the charcoal helps out with the, um, keeping it not smelling or anything like that. And, the plants will live for a while, but long term, not the best for for container planting. You want drainage, so it's it just kind of balancing out what your expe expectations are. That. Yeah, and you can do super cute little. I mean, there's tiny little indoor plant pots without drainage that you could use as little place settings or whatnot. And you can you can put a little like a lissom plant or a little succulent or whatever. You can do those for to also be part of your holiday table. Um, and then after the event, you can just pull those out and plant them wherever. So, I mean, there's, a, there's don't let that stop you, I guess, with your design. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a lot of fun. And definitely as you come into all of our stores, talk to all of us um, working there and we'll give you ideas for colors, sizes, shapes, how plants will grow. Um, and we'll definitely help you out there. I had someone asking about uh, indoor plant, um, uh, considerations and different kinds of options that you you could recommend and it's definitely uh it's definitely based on what you like and what you want to we want to show so um, come in and see our indoor floors and we'll talk about all the plants there um, yeah i mean we'll be getting in poinsettias soon mm -hmm. that's the party <laughs> plant for sure <laughs> <laughs> which we love um <laughs> But you know, you can totally use in, in most areas, you could probably get away with doing a poinsettia outside by your front door in a protected area. And that could be a really nice holiday container. Um, they just, you know, they obviously they don't want really intense sun um, or a lot of cold, you know, freezing. They wouldn't like that. But in most locations around the bay, you could, so you can think of things like that or amaryllis or something like that. You can incorporate those into party pots. So yeah, like I, I, if I, if there's any big takeaway from this class, I would just say, don't overthink it. Just have fun playing with whatever sort of you're drawn to because they're really just living the case. They're not, you know, we're just thinking about it temporarily. Um, and then they can sort of go in their appropriate places after whatever your event is or the holidays. And, and I, I think it's a, I think it's fun to be able to play around. So. Yeah, definitely. It gets you more comfortable with the plants that you're growing and try out different things. So it's always nice. For, um, I have many more questions, but definitely any, any other last thoughts or ideas or anything you want to go over? 
for your uh, uh, shady doorways, you're going to see lots of azaleas in bloom pretty soon and lots of cyclamen, and those will do really well in those locations. Yeah, I had some cyclamen. Yeah, cyclamen is always good for, I mean, this can take a lot of shade, and it comes in a whole whole bunch of bright colors so yeah the reds the pinks all those and they're flowering throughout this whole season so it's nice to get some flowers during the winter yeah well i would just say i i i would actually be really curious if any of you put together a party pot you can send me a picture i would love to see it i think it's the one thing about doing these classes virtually is we don't have that interaction as much anymore and see what we're all creating and i think that's really fun so Feel free to send me, um, you know, a picture of your party pod or tag us on Instagram or Facebook, because um, I'd love to see what you come up with. Have a great holiday season.